Folks, Tuesday night, welcome aboard Between the Rolls. This is Murder Hobo Inc. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're interested, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord when Discord is up. Uh, if you want to buy cool stuff like the shirt, uh, phone case, throw pillow, duvet cover, shit like that, the link is down below. Uh, if you are in the market for some customized dice, and who doesn't love math rocks, uh, run on over to Twitter and hit up at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, see if they have the time, the energy, or the willingness to go ahead and make you some cool custom dice like Carol's got. Uh, also, if your game's yes, sure. and you want to spice it up a little bit, or make it stink worse, uh, go on over to oddfishgames.com and check out their Adventure Sense, over 60 cents for your nasal pleasure. They also have something called the Shine System, so if you want to be a writer like myself or Edgar Allan Poe, only gooder, uh, check out their Shine System. That's it for the intro. This is Between the Rolls, boys and girls. Tonight we are going to do some recaps. Uh, we had a full slate of games last week, and then we'll get on to our main topic, which is cults and secret societies uh what are they good for Ooh, nothing at all let's introduce you to the panel in honor of international women's day uh we've got two sure. ladies on here uh carol uh i'll go ahead and call you a lady because i'll be nice today because oh, uh who are you and tell us a little bit about yourself well, I'm Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter who has her own Twitch channel where I paint minis and talk about whatever. And that's Muses underscore Touch. I can be found here on the Crit campaign where I play Anja Jaeger and maybe on the occasional Saturday one shot, although <clears throat> that's gotten a lot tougher these days because I have another obligation at that point <coughs> but and i'll never say never i'll be, i'll be back at some point on a saturday one shot and what days do you stream what days do i stream i stream saturdays at 12 30 p.m eastern time uh mondays at seven o'clock p.m and wednesdays at 8 30 so that'd be tomorrow there you go, folks. So if you're looking for some mini painting advice or want to see how a master does it. Uh, I have a key with I just uh, let's see if we can get her up there. Uh, that is a beautiful great, butterfly. Uh, butterfly. It's not a butterfly. It's not a great, sorry, camera's not focusing on it, but I have a camera that focuses on the base. There but you that go. was my latest, my latest one I finished. Cool. On stream. Carrie, you're up next. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Carrie. I'm the resident dog wrangler and producer and sometimes math rock maker. I play on B side on Calamity and on Cacophony. Very I think nice. I might need you to make me some math rocks because <laughs> mine aren't doing so uh -oh. well. In any freight well actually that's not true. You already got my, some. My Sunday yeah, but it only works for that character. Uh, We're that's probably true. Who may who I'd love to play again? Right, yeah, Frank. Good luck. You uh, said you were gonna run something. I can uh, with that. I probably lied. Uh, folks, like <laughs> I said, we had a full slate of games last week. Three, in fact, along with our Between the Rolls episode, uh, which was all about timelines. Uh, I suggest you take a look at that. We'll be delving into that next week, as well as we renew our Socium project. Uh, always a crowd favorite. Tonight, we're going to go ahead and recap three games. Uh, we'll start with Carol. Episode 333 was the 26th installment of Cred. Oh, uh, what happened? That means we have been on doing it for about a year, huh? <clears throat> if you divide 52 by two. Uh, what happened? Oh, Lord. Uh, what happened? Well, we had just shown back up in town after going through that horrific uh, dungeon of sorts uh, where we were running around the lava tubes trying to figure out where townspeople were being kidnapped to and such. And we get a lot of answers there. And we show up in town and they want our heads. <clears throat> something something happened while we were away. Uh, the ghouls seem to be taking over and people are being hung probably to feed the ghouls. This is all I guess. I don't know. I'm not the GM. Uh, 
and we were wanted for treason and murder. And we were going to be led away, except for the fact it was all a well-concocted plan that we fucked up, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, ultimately, the what happened was what was supposed to happen, which was basically uh, we were to take out the ghouls. I think basically a couple of them were supposed to be sent away, and we were going to have less to fight, but. Uh, at, but the thing of it is, we a couple of us noticed right away. I noticed it further on that the when they when our manacles were put on, they were not put on very tight, and it was very easy to pop them off. So clearly, this was a plan to get us free, and <clears throat> and so we as we proceeded down the street towards the jail, I guess. Uh, basically, a cart came running in and rammed into uh, another cart with a ghoul, with a pair of ghouls and they went running after the first cart person and <clears throat> then of course our monk buddy bran who hates ghouls with a passion i don't know it's supposed to be a madness but it's, it's really i think it's fair i don't think he's insane at all uh, -huh. uh he went no if you if you remember what happened and where, what triggered him, uh, I don't think he's insane at all. He has every right to hate them and want to kill them all. So uh, so he went after them, which left four ghouls, me and uh, my other two compatriots and some of the NPCs. We actually had some of the NPCs who were also wanted come and join the fight. Uh, <clears throat> he was going to murder Kyle because of course, they friggin' cast a spell on me as I was about to friggin' die. I was gonna heal myself, and they cast. Uh, of course, naturally, I can't make a save to save my life. And it was what the hell was it called? Because Taryn used the spell. What's the? Uh, basically, they form patterns in the sky and just end up staring at them. Um, not pattern. They have not pattern. Yep, yep. I've said. I remember Taryn used to use that spell. But not in my own party. <laughs> but anyways, because of that, I ended up going down because I just sat there and stared at the sky. But everyone else made their saves, so that was good. But we and uh, Brand came, saved me like normal, and we, we we killed all the ghouls. And oh, what the hell happened after that? We went, we got to a place of safety, and we talked a bit about a little bit about the situation. But we found out our next task is going to be helping people get the hell out of the city. So um, we're going to be evacuating people next session. I think nice. that's about it. That's, that's, you want to see the whole thing, watch it. It's on, still on Twitch and it'll be on, it'll be in our YouTube archives. Good call. Uh, also, if you don't want to see the moneymaker faces, uh, we do have the audio only podcast. Uh, tinyurl.com M Hobo Inc. Audio. So, you know, if you got a long drive to work or something, you can always download that. That was cred. That is every other Thursday, not this Thursday, no. last Thursday, and a week from Thursday. Uh, next up is episode 334. <laughs> It is the 10th edition of B-Side, uh, and that leads us to Carrie. Carrie, tell us a little bit about Calamity. So this was the B-Side of Calamity. We had, our party had gotten to, what city is it? Yor. Yor. Oh, no, 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 I'm Zeto. 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 And they uh, weren't really keen on having us there, but they needed us to try to find out why the lake level keep lowering so we had to leave one of our party behind as collateral <laughs> so and we had to take one of theirs with us as punishment i think and so we started on across the lake got to the edge of the river uh or sorry yeah why the river yeah so we we docked the boat were immediately attacked then our party that was left behind magically broke out of jail with Lucifer <laughs> came across in his boat the party from that we were tasked with bringing us 
bringing with us started shooting at him. Eventually we all get back together. Uh, we managed to kill a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, basically. Yeah. I try to I try to convince everybody to eat it. Uh, Jesse's such a killjoy. Yeah, Jesse was not happy about that. So then we decided to travel up the length of the river to f- try to find out what was going on. Found a dam that was partially built. And there were turtles and rabbits fighting each other over it. Beavers. 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 Sorry, beavers. Yes. And we managed to tear down the dam. But then as we went higher, we discovered there were tributaries everywhere. And there were dams started everywhere. So now we're not really sure what to make of the whole situation. Uh, Remind me again why you were not very welcomed in at Zeto. I don't know what you mean. Uh huh. I see. What did they do? Uh, it wasn't they. It was her. She what threw... did you did you did you throw a punch? Somebody? I did. They had it coming. Oh, wow! Oh they my were god! Being rude. I totally. That was a total shot in the dark. <laughs> I guess I know you really well. You've been hey Frank, to throw a punch why are everybody. you in these dicks? Hey, because my PCs are dicks. <laughs> I was so that up. is not true. I was good up until then. And they were PCs, just being condescending and mean. My PCs don't tend to be dicks. Uh, and PCs you, you are were, dicks. You were traveling with a group of dicks with your PC. So I, can, yeah, but I wasn't. It's yeah, like, yeah. You can stop it. Yeah, there's no yeah but about it. Wait, wait, wait. When you were a dick to me, even when I wasn't traveling with those bunch of ticks. When I was more or less alone with the NPC, you Force. still were a dick to me. So. Force of habit. Yeah, I, sure. I didn't have Excuse the NPC you. kill you. So. Excuse us. Yeah. Uh, final game of the week was on Sunday. It is our Margu family day. Uh, Margu consists of one family uh, who plays. They're the ones that got me into doing podcasting in the first place. This is the We return to Margu A-side for the 50 fourth episode uh after a six month hiatus <coughs> excuse me uh six month hiatus we return to the chasm peaks essentially a very deep grand canyon where these guys are searching for the elusive dragon horde uh that they surmises down here they did kill a dragon wonders never cease and now they have uh, gone into the chasm peaks to try and find the treasure one problem uh they are also currently quasi owners of a a roadside tavern slash inn slash truck stop roadhouse uh, roadhouse but the uh local halfling government uh insists on getting paid for some reason uh taxation filing fees etc so they have a finite amount of days in which to raise the money which they already have get to the the state capital which is quite a few days away uh but in the meantime they've decided to risk it go into the chasm spend a few days in there they're currently on day eight uh they still have to get out they're they're on a mission from god they're on a mission from god they're three days out to triorki and then i think another seven days or eight days to the capital so time is a waste and they went in uh we added a pc uh for once i have allowed a drow into one of my campaigns i detest drow uh and racist. actually uh, yes I, I remember racist. Racist shit bag. uh but as uh carrie has pointed out uh christy has played a drow in the past so i have allowed she her did. Yeah, but this isn't a campaign, uh, so I'm very reluctant, but there's problems with it wait, anyway. Wait, what? Wait, you're bringing a drow into, what was it, Sunday? Margu. Mm-hmm. Margu. Oh, new character. Oh, cool. Uh, it's the youngest uh, murder hobo we have. It is a middle Frank's daughter, Sophia. <gasps> anyway, they <gasps> brought her oh, in. She, how old is she? Uh, she is 14, I think. Oh, awesome. 14. Yeah, uh, let's keep them in line. I don't have her, to listen to so much bullshit. 
<laughs> there's a lot less misogyny going on. However, uh, when her character was introduced, her uncle, Copious Vol Bitters, uh, decided to light her up. So her introduction to the campaign was less than stellar. They essentially stole the boat that she owned, uh, then wanted to charge her for its safe return, then fought what they think is a kraken. It was actually a tentacle golem that destroyed the boat. <laughs> so oh, assholes they are back on foot uh they have found some npcs that they didn't attack which was kind of a nice touch uh and they've been given instructions on how to get out of the chasm within three days uh they've also been given tips on where or where not the uh elusive dragon horde might be uh they're gonna risk it they're they're rolling the dice and taking the chance so they're gonna risk it Take a look around, poke around a few more days, see if they can find this elusive horde, and then get out, get to Triorki, then get to the capital city, pay off the debt, and own free and clear the roadhouse. Uh, they've been working at this for <sighs> 10, 10, 11 sessions, I think. Um, so... They're, they're all happy to be back. AJ was not able to make it last week. I believe he'll make it this week. And then we will have a full party, uh, seven players. Wow. So that should be interesting. That is Margu. Um, and it is the family affair. And it is wild. Uh, those are our three uh, games last week. This week, uh, we have the Cacophony uh saga going on on thursday I didn't think they are... he could play oh i don't know we might have cacophony okay uh, i can't remember david uh had a little oral surgery and oh, uh, fun. What? He's, uh, i think he sounds like mumbles from dick tracy uh a couple days from now he'll probably be okay yeah we'll see uh if that, david. if that goes we'll play cacophony on thursday saturday is a special game it is part of midwest game fest uh an online con <clears throat> an online convention so if you're interested in that tickets i think are two bucks very inexpensive uh going for good cause so that is saturday sunday will be margu again uh let's see if we can get him out of the chasm uh hard to say uh but that is what are we've there got hookers there if there's hookers they'll never get out of the chasm there are no hookers. Oh, well, they might. Then. Uh, yeah, so they might be able to get out of there. The two teenage boys have a tendency to press their luck with the ladies. So uh, it, it does get kind of spicy at times, uh, but it's all good family fun. Uh, a lot of competition there. Uh, that, that ends the recaps. So now let's start something new. Uh, one of the things about a campaign <clears throat> are having villains, Okay. And I'm not going to go into all the bullshit of orcs and drow and all that crap. Nobody cares. Uh, yeah, one of the... That's Carol's line. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, no, I, do not, I don't hate Tabaxi. <laughs> one of the things about having a campaign is you got to have a bad guy. And uh, unless you've got dwarf Nazis hey. like uh, Carol's got. I do not have dwarf Nazis. <laughs> no, the dwarf Nazis are all gone. Dwarf Nazi tabaxi, I think, is what she's got in her campaign. No, uh, I don't have that in my campaign at all. In fact, I'm not even going to cover that for tonight. Nice. Cults and secret societies. Uh, those will help flesh out any world, uh, cults especially. Uh, no, nothing wrong with throwing evil cultists at a party. Uh, but to make it a little bit better, you have to have an organized society, hence cult. Uh, so tonight we're going to come up with a few cults or maybe a few secret societies. We, you know, it, it'll be up to each person here. We're going to go ahead and just not really expound, but go ahead and give you a brief overview on a cult or a secret society that maybe you want to use in your own campaign. Uh, the ladies both got late notice on this, so I'll go ahead and just keep yammering away. Uh, I came up with quite a few, but uh, the one I'll go ahead and start with is called the Masters of the Ninth Lash. Uh, these guys <laughs> are actually kind of a secret society, not a cult. Uh, so it's going to be an urban 
setting uh, and it's part of a dominatrix group uh, so the leader is called the holy flail and she is a female dominatrix uh, the size and makeup of this society uh, are uh, I've written down 37 regular individuals four trainers uh, which are a mix of male and female I'm not going to be chauvinistic about it two higher-ups that oversee the general frivolity of things, and then, of course, the Holy Flail, the mistress of the uh, Ninth Lash. Uh, it is called Ninth Lash because that is what they do to you. Yes, the trainers, the two higher-ups, and the Holy Flail all beat the shit out of individuals who are uh, upper echelon people, business owners, powers, political uh, individuals, things of that nature. Standard, nothing new here. Search dominatrix on the internet, kids. Your parents will thank me. Uh, that's what they do. Their main tenant is life is pain. And the trainers, nor the holy flail, actually do the whipping. They force the initiates to whip themselves uh, so that they can be taught that life is pain. So rather than enjoy uh, all the jewels that life has provided these people, uh, they have to pay for it in this manner. Their end goal is to kidnap uh, new initiates and teach them uh, and beat the spirit out of them so that they actually join it. Uh, some of those strange things about it are they don't have a secret handshake or anything. It's just kind of a, not really sex club, because I, I'm not saying there's sex involved. Uh, it's more of uh, the Brothers Flagellante, um, if you're familiar with the Monty Python whipping each other. Uh, and I thought that was rather clever for a secret society so that is the masters of the ninth lash uh carrie carol who wants to go next i don't care do you want to go next do you, are you, you ready you let me go carol it is what do you got for us carol all right so the first one i'm taking from my own world okay. uh i have the secrets it's not the bad guys actually these are the good guys it was kind of inspired by the harpers um, and they're called the Guardians of Song. Guardians of what? Song. Song. <laughs> and I'll get to why they're called that. Um, the leader, I never actually came up with a leader name. Uh, I was thinking like, all right, maybe Meister might be a good one uh, for a leader title. Okay. Uh, size, uh, probably about 75 scattered throughout the kingdoms or kingdom um and maybe some spies you know in the neighbor kingdom that wants to basically take over and bring tyranny to that realm uh the and makeup i face probably well obviously bards rogue scouts anybody who wanted to be involved and has good qualifications uh, you know and they have to be capable <laughs> and can find them. It is a secret society after all, and there are and they have their enemies that would like to take them down. So they do keep it, keep things a secret. Uh, let's see, where was I? All right, so beliefs uh, of defending the realms against tyranny and other such threats. Uh, obviously the end goal is keeping the land safe and making sure that that neighbor next door never ever sees their plans to fruition uh well, preventing the zorish they said this is my world so we've got raskellum which is the good kingdom and the zorish who are the tyrants uh and all right so odd factoid well it's not really i'm just i'm gonna go a little bit into the history they actually were they actually were a fairly old 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 like they've been around for a very long time they were founded when, so I have this artifact in my game called Song Stealer, which basically can steal this, basically uh, ruin uh, musical instruments uh, and silence bards. Like it sends them into a catatonic stupor. 
if nice. uh, they lose their voice. And it was developed by a tyrant who bards, you know, you know, bards, and they go around and tell stories and bring news and can also be some of the people that work against the crown. And, you know, these tyrants don't tend to like to be made fun of in public circles. So, or have, you know, their truths of how nasty are showed up by these people. So hence he got kind of sick of it. So that's why he made this thing or had this thing made. So they did get, they, they did get it from, they did manage to steal it away from him. And they were basically formed to prevent anyone else from getting their hands on it. And over time, <clears throat> over time, the artifact was, was kind of lost. It was found in a descendant of one of these people in the, and the the um, the guardians kind of went away for a while, but they're back because this is it said also being my world. This is also where the original Taryn is, and she's basically running the guardian guardians a song in my world at this moment because she destroyed the artifact. So, and I think that's about it for that. That worked, but they're good guys. But they're good guys, yeah. They're the good guys. They're the ones right. who, you know, who prevent. Yeah, you know, said they're still spying on the 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 nasty neighbor next door because that is, that's where this this essentially came from was from that kingdom. Nice. And then those people, the, the the family is still the same family that rules over that nation. So very nice. That's for two, now. I have for plans. now. For now. That's two secret societies. <laughs> Carrie, you're up. What do you got? Okay, so I'm going to steal one that you started. Huh? <laughs> yes. Which I just had to because of the title. The Cabal of the Mongoose. <laughs> that is a great name. <laughs> nice. So the leader's title is Herpestes, which is H-E-R-P-E-T-E-S, which is actually the genus name of the mongoose. But nice. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> um that's cool so they're <coughs> like like say if it was the united states it would be a national group but they have small individual cells but they've networked together um and unfortunately mine's a good guy too the next one will be a bad guy um so their main goals are to basically stop sex trafficking nice um and of course you know if they happen to come across any other like bad things but they want to take down like the major players like a jeffrey epstein kind of thing you know blah 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 cool um their end goal is of course to try to eradicate that and their symbol handshake blah 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 whatever so they all have to have a tattoo of a snake bite on their neck. On their neck? Mm -hmm. Other than an actual snake bite. Is their leader Brian Williams? No. Not Brian Williams. What was the guy's name? To catch a predator guy? Uh, Chris? Was it Chris Williams? Uh, Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen. <laughs> no. Oh, that would have been so cool. Um, so... Because, you know, you don't really expect somebody that's good to have a tattoo on their neck, you know, because how you got to get a job? You got a tattoo on your face, whatever. That's right. So why is it called mongoose? Because mongoose attack venomous snakes, and that's how they view people in the sex trafficking industry. They're venomous snakes that need to be taken down. And That is a nice tie-in. Mongoose are actually nice. immune to snake venom they have some sort of like protein in their blood that even if they're bit it they just oh, duck, water off a duck's back <coughs> they're all good with that nice i like that one i had such good plans for that but i like yours i like yours better yeah you can't, uh, going after pedophiles and sex traffickers are awesome that's uh, great but my next one will be bad for bad people well, I, you know what? I'll go next, and I am going to go with a bad one as well. Uh, this one is called the Masters of the Prodigal Host. Uh, their leader's title is He with Open Arms. Uh, and I almost didn't. Please, I, no. al I 
almost did it, but I, I won't. Thank uh, you. What, you. What, what, what were you going to do? Go ahead. <laughs> what were you going to do? Are, are you a Star Trek fan? Kind of, yeah, which which depends on which Star Trek. Next Generation? Yeah, I, I, years ago. Timbo asked... with his arms open. Timbo with his arms closed. Uh, uh, Picard landed on a, a planet with a, a foreign captain, but they had to team up to fight a, a monster. But you know, they told their I'm history. Really talking was anecdotes. Boring. That's right. I so, think I know what you're. I think I know what you're talking about. Sales unfurled. So, uh, but anyway, the masters of the prodigal host. He with open arms because uh, the prodigal son returned. Uh, so the size of this bad cult is 17 members and the leader currently. Uh, the main tenets is that everyone is welcome in the arms of the prodigal host. Uh, he with open arms welcomes those who have nowhere else to go now the the main tenet is that everybody is welcome but the odd the odd factoid and i'm going to go ahead and skip around here is that uh like any other good or good bad cult is that all of these runaways and orphans are brainwashed into thinking that he with open arms is the only true leader. So they are going to work behind the scenes. Their end goal is to build a small army of zealot runaways and miscreants, and then go ahead and take over the town structure. So this would be in maybe a small or a large city, not a metropolis really. Uh, and this guy, he with, he with open arms, goes around and finds those down on their luck, nowhere to turn, brings them in, he treats them well, uh, and uh, he expects allegiance uh, from them uh -huh. for this uh, standard routine kind of asshole cultist. But their main goal is to go ahead and take over the power structure in the city, uh, usually through violence. So if you think uh, Heath Ledger, the Joker, uh, I think oh, that right, would right. be the best one uh, because he took in all of those who had nowhere else to turn. Uh, again, the masters of the prodigal host, are going to be evil so he, the he with open arms will brainwash them into stealing, uh from everywhere else just to go ahead and get supplies uh and they are not above murder so you can either join them <clears throat> or at the die. risk of being found out you die so wow. uh it's kind of it's kind of a harsh man well no i mean they're, they're they have a choice <laughs> yeah <laughs> Not really. Brainwashed if, or you're if, out. If, de yeah. if death is the choice, that's not really a choice. No, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, now, if I could kick your ass, kick his ass. That would be right. Yeah, but they are not jumped in because he promotes a loving attitude. So who, who wouldn't want to be taken care of when you've got nobody else? Uh, he with open arms is going to go ahead and take care of you, feed and clothe you. And you will see the light of uh, the prodigal host. So and that's this after you had the nine lash people take it out on you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> see, I, I I thought about melding them, but I, I'm not going to. I thought about going with the uh, uh, opponents of the cabal of, or yeah, the cabal of the mongoose. But so yeah, masters of the prodigal host, and all of these. Uh, I, I'll I'll go ahead and say it at risk. But I think all of these secret societies and cults are going to have an urban basis because, you know, wandering around the trees, eh, not so much. So uh, some people have a lot of problems with urban scenarios. This is your perfect drawing. So, Carol, that was my bad one. Uh, what do you got next? Okay, so, well, I'm going with bad, too. And I decided since I didn't have a lot of time to do this. I would take on the cult that uh, Anja, my character in Cred, was part of. Now, of course, I'm not the GM, so this may have nothing to do with what the hell he's got planned. This is just bits and pieces of stuff that I've picked up or, or wrote in her original history. So the cult's name is the Deep So Hey, spoilers here, spoilers. Uh, to degree two though it's called the deep rises uh, the deep rising 
Um, the name of the, the leaders would be mother and father. Um, and if I just said it was mother who is wandering somewhere around on <clears throat> Farazine right now, apparently. Uh, it's broken up into sects of 25 to 30 people. Uh, and their beliefs really are, they all believe in Father Dagon. Actually, let's see, let me read. what is it? It's beliefs in Angol, which sort of, I know, beliefs in Angol sort of make up the same thing. Um, they're all working to bring the rise of some great one in their minds. Uh, I don't know if it's, all right, so I actually don't know if it's like Father, if they're actually trying to bring Dagon into the world or what, but um, they're trying to bring something into the world, and they believe it will bring forth a new age. Uh, this thing will destroy technology, and it will, you know, all of this corrupting technology and such, and it will reset the world back to its base level, so that everybody can rebuild it to a new and better place. Uh, let's see. And the other thing is, uh, and I also believe that this dreamer mm -mm -mm, is the linchpin in this plan. At least I think that's the case. That's the way it's been sort of pre presented. <coughs> um, the dreamer that they no longer have in their possession. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, what else was there? Uh, oh, oh, I didn't have an factoid because I'm not really, really sure where to go with this. An odd factoid. Um, I know, uh, yeah, I, I see where I'm not actually making this cult. Mm -hmm. I guess I could say, uh, they, the, the odd fact, well, I mean, Anja has, everybody's, everybody who's a part of the cult get, get, has a brand on their back somewhere. I think I determined hers is probably right below her neck, center of the back. And it's, um, oh, I have a little drawing of it. I put, but I will give a description once I can find the drawing of it. <laughs> so basically, oh, basically they're like a tentacled being above water, you know, coming up out of water. Nice. That's that is the, uh, that's, that'd be my fact to it. I think that works. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> How do they make their money? Uh, well, you know, I never thought about that. <laughs> um, <sighs> They, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna say that most of the people can go out and have jobs and things like that. They may be, they may all live together, but they can go out and be out in the world. I mean, it's, it's, it is a, it is still a somewhat is. I'll go with it, it's a kind of a secret cult that not everybody knows about. I mean, they were kind of, I mean, I just sect was in the middle of the woods, but they weren't totally secret because obviously they found her. Um, so I think that's kind of it. They just they have jobs, and uh, it's a cult. How the cult how the cults work, you know? People donate their all their 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 worldly goods to the cult, and I think nice. I'm going with that. They, and that and the cult takes care of them. Okay, yeah, that'll work. So yep. kind of like uh, an expensive Catholic system. No, not well. Yeah, but the Catholic Church doesn't. Act, I don't live at the church. And they don't take care of me, okay. so it, no, no. I'm thinking more. I'm thinking like an actual like Jonestown here. Ah. The people get yeah. No, the Catholic. You don't give all your possessions to the Catholic Church. You just give a small amount every week if you go, Fair just enough. to make sure that the building stays you know heated and such. Sure. Yeah, we'll go yeah. with that. Idea. <laughs> no, do you know how much it costs to heat a friggin' church right now? You only use it once a week. No, you don't. No, you Even. don't use it once a week. It's we have. I don't know what they're doing now because the whole pandemic also screwed everything up. But they had daily masses and everything, so no. And we just had <laughs> Ash Wednesday. Come on. Meetings. They have uh, meetings. You're a lapsed events. Catholic. You know this. Yeah, you should. Oh, then you should definitely know better. <laughs> I know, but I'm just having I uh Carrie, what's your evil one that you got for us? Okay, so I'm gonna steal another one of yours. Jesus. Good thing I wrote a lot. You, yeah, well, you're... since I only knew an hour before this that I was gonna do this. That's fair. So that's kinda why I did what I did. I knew five minute well, five minutes before this what I was, was doing. So I'm stealing <coughs> faithful of the paladin. <coughs> 
Uh, I figured that one. Okay. So, in Norse mythology, Odin, Allfather, has his two ravens. They go around and collect knowledge for him, bring it back to him so he knows everything that's going on in the world. So, the ravens, his ravens are, like, in the living world. So, the pallid raven is a raven of the dead. So, which is why he's white. He's not, uh... He's not black. Well, he, she, whatever. Um, So the leader's title, and this is a female-centered cult. Happy Woman's Day! International Woman's Day! (laughs) Yes! Um, Is Branwen, which of course is, uh, means raven or crow or whatever in Gaelic or whatever. Whatever language that is. Um, so and it's an actual cult following so there's just one one area where this cult is at it's not doesn't have branches it hasn't franchised or anything like that and um they're they it's a group of necromancers basically and so they send the raven out to get as much information from the dead as they can They make their money by stealing off the dead. So anybody that's buried with jewels, blah, 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 they take all that. Um, Symbols, handshake, blah, blah, blah. So they have a, uh, they have a brand that's of a raven feather. So everybody has to be branded with this raven feather on their body somewhere. And their main tenets is, or or whatever is, they feel like, as females, they have been disregarded and neglected in society. So they're trying to gain this information so that they can eventually rise up and become the top tier in society. Nice. And basically, that's their end goal. They want power. Okay. Oddities? Uh, oddities. <sighs> they, uh, they take on male initiates, but they're only allowed to ever be servants. Oh, nice. So it's they nice cook to- for them, clean for them. So it's an Amazon society. Yes. I suppose it's not really evil, but they're not doing any good. No greater good? No. They're they're in it for themselves. Okay. That's fair. Uh, we've got more than enough time, so we're going to do Oh, my God. Or... I don't have oh, anything, my... man. Hey, this is an Iron DM segment, man. Figure Apparently. that shit out. Okay, I'll try and draw mine out. Okay, this one I just came up on the spot for International Women's Day. Uh, my first co- my first secret society was kind of neutral. It was just you know a club and thing. This one's going to be a good society or uh, a good secret society called the Order of the Onyx Dagger. Uh, the makeup of this because there is no leader, everyone is equal. The Order of the Onyx Dagger is made up of women who have been battered. Uh, and have had enough so there is in this town uh, a woman's shelter where they have all gotten together they've all heard the horror stories during group uh feedback about how they've been victimized by their husbands or spouses or significant others and they have decided all eight members that they're done they've had more than enough this is not going to happen anymore so uh Oh, what was that movie? Oh. Who was in it? Uh, it's it's the movie where uh, the three of us had something bad, but you two are going to take care of the bad person that hurt me, and then Carol and I will take care of the bad person that hurt you for plausible deniability. It was... Uh... Horrible bosses. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> a scenario. Actually, yes, that, that is a good one. Uh, made up of eight women. So these eight women have decided that they're going to get even with their abusers. Oh, happy, this is international, 
Happy International Women's Day. Uh, and they can be identified by a copper ring uh, because they don't want to get tattoos because then it would be too easy to be identified. They can slip the copper ring off. The copper ring is barely noticeable. It is a bland item, circular in nature, standard ring, Could be no anything. ornamentation whatsoever, always worn on the pinky finger. Uh, so as they continue to knock off these abusers and remain at the woman's shelter, more abuse victims come in and that is how they initiate it. So as more domestic violence is pursued, uh, these the numbers of the Order of the Onyx Dagger increase. And it's called that because each one is presented with an Onyx Dagger and it is left in the body of the abuser. Nice. Uh, it is devoid of any ornamentation or identifying marks, no DNA or anything like that. Uh, but they go ahead and kill their abusers with the Onyx Dagger, uh, preferably in the genitalia or the back. Uh, about eyes. I'm thinking but, eyes. Sometimes their tongues are cut out, especially mm -hmm. if they were verbally abusive uh, towards their victims. Uh, but this is... You can never really call murder good, but <coughs> I'm envisioning killing this. killing for good, man. They're killing for good. They're the boondock saints. <laughs> uh, but the Order of the Onyx Dagger is only women, so they are uh, whatever misogynistic is, or whatever the opposite of misogynistic is. Uh, they only accept women into their ranks. Uh, the, the current role is eight, but again, as more abuse victims come in, they will be brought about with the tenants. Now, I haven't really decided if you come in and you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to do this, blah, blah, blah. You get Meek Millie, who, oh, I can't do any of this. Uh, but I'm thinking, you know, after years of medieval abuse and people getting medieval on you, uh, you're going to be more than happy to just go ahead and ice these people because, God damn it, uh, you can't rehabilitate everybody, so fuck them. Uh, so that is the Order of the Onyx Dagger. So how do they get the daggers? Uh, they, uh, that's a good question. You know what? I'm going to say it's near a mining colony. And the daggers aren't so much daggers as they are obsidian chips. Okay. Uh, like so that. they're shanks. <laughs> the onyx shanks made out of prison. Prison utensils. Uh, so yeah, maybe the Order of the Onyx shank. <laughs> <laughs> it's a better choice uh but yeah it would have to be somewhere near a volcanic or mining town uh and you know if you're working in the mines all day long and hot brutal things you're gonna come home pissed off and you better realize that at some point in time you're gonna sleep so to all you uh woman abusers out there be you male or female uh you find yourself duct taped to the bed yeah, tough shit <laughs> You will so, sleep at some point. You will sleep at some point. So that is the order of the Onyx Shankers. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, Carol, what are you... bad. I, oh, my God. I, Coming up with the third one, that was, that was going to be a bit of a stretch. I was thinking maybe uh, the Time Defenders, which will now, be a Now, band. hang on. A second. You've done good, right? Yeah, this will be good. Not bad, okay. Because you there... can always do a neutral one. Well, I guess this would could be neutral. I mean, okay. I mean, I'm thinking. Although this is going to sound so. What the hell is that damn show? It's one of the. There's a TV show that had basically has this premise that I can't remember what it's called. We're basically they run around through time and and set things right that are that are wrong. Oh Basically, yeah, uh, sliders. No, that's not it. But that the same, the similar timeless idea. Or... Timeless. No, it's the one with it's. It's a. Um, I think it's what Mark. Is it? No, it's DC. Bacula? DC. It's a DC show. The you know DC comics. Uh, it's well, it's. Uh, oh my god! How can I forget the damn name of the show? I actually like the show. It's been a while since I watched it. But they basically they have well in the modern modern terms they run around in a ship and and go and and fix things that are fucked up and it's a bunch of well it's reality they're not really good guys actually 
Uh, but of the Time Defenders and the leaders are called the Timekeeper and a bunch of powerful wizards who each, uh, so it's a wizard's tower um, with a portal and each person that, that's part of it has a has an amulet that controls this portal and they can travel through time. Oh man, and they can that in the cacophony. So actually wait, did you, yeah, you guys do have something like that in cacophony, don't you? Yeah, they're fucking around with time travel now. Wait, not David is. But, but wait, wait, wait. But you don't have the portal, you just have a net you have a necklace, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. See this this I didn't even think of that. But this requires both. You have to have the portal. You have to have a portal. The necklace just activates it. You know, so I that see. they don't want everybody being able to get through there. <coughs> So it's a security measure. It's a fault. Um, <laughs> but plus, it also it will bring them back too. Um, it said it, it's basically they're wizards. Uh, they're t- they're ultimately twelve wizards that make up it. But there are other people who obviously they can't really. That you know, it's always better to go with the team a lot of times to fix things. So they have other adventures and stuff that that are part of it, and they just go through time and. If something's screwed up, they can fix it, or they know something bad's gonna happen. They can fuck with time, so they kind of do things uh, in their own judgment. Whether or not that's good or evil, it may actually be somewhere in between. Uh, is Scott Bakula, one of them. No, no, I said this is not. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot believe I, I like, I, I like, yeah, I like Quantum Leap too. What the hell was the name? I'm just gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't do comic books. It's not a con. It's a TV show. It's not even a comic. Well, I don't know. It's Maybe based it on DC. You said it. It is. TV show. Is it recent? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still on now. It's yeah, still it's, on. It's still. Uh, it's still. It's still uh, in production. In fact, I think it's out. Well, now. now you have to find out. It's connected with with Green Arrow. Because his Sarah Lance is, is like the main character in this. Um, Not a clue. I will. I'm gonna look Google it up before the end of this. I'm gonna Google at the end and figure out the name of the damn show, or I'll go, honey. Uh, and goal just to, basically their goals and beliefs to make sure that time pro- 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 proceeds as normal. I know. I, I, the other one I thought it was doing something with Rose of the Raven, having some sort of a pirate council or whatever. But you already stole all the Raven things, so it's like, well, that there goes that out the window. Wow. <laughs> I like. And your... plus, also, also, it's kind of like it's it's too much kind of like the uh, Guardians of Song. It's basically it'd be a group of pirates against tyranny and all about freedom, but. I, I can't think of anything. I don't else, really, really like it, but I appreciate your sons of the faceless, faceless lady incel group. That was nice. good. I gotta find the name of that damn show. Okay, okay, Carrie. While she's looking for that, finish us off. What you got for your third? Uh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. I don't really have one. So that's the problem. I, that's why I said I literally pulled that out of my ass. Okay. Well, here. Order of the Spawned God. Okay. So. Oh, there you good, go. Good, bad, or ugly. Um, we'll say bad. Okay. And who spawns a god, really? I get it. Uh, any player from Murder Hobo Inc. and Adventures <laughs> in Bar. Just because, why the fuck not? What was this? It's. She said, uh, who spawns a god? I'm like, any of you fuckers would. Did <laughs> if, I? If you guys could get away with it, you would. Well, no, it would and have to be like... Karen certainly wouldn't do that. And then you'd enslave them. <laughs> it would be like whoever the leader is dug up some sort of relic or some it's sort just of like campaign person that was... Open like the box and let evil into the world. deep sleep, whatever. Did some <laughs> fucking magic fucked up shit to spawn this god that they can control. Old job. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's a, it's a god. How do you control a god? He brought him back. The god doesn't know it's a god. Oh. Ooh, nice. Oh, or heavy amounts of influence. I because see. they, the, whoever this is, 
either got a magic item or they found a like a god in slumber so they could I don't know pull sperm out or whatever <laughs> and make what a the- god right oh <laughs> zeus, zeus gives that shit away for free right i, I mean, know hell, he's raping everybody <laughs> so you spawn this god but he doesn't know he's a god because you know hello first thing that he comes into consciousness is this person that's brought him <laughs> into being he she they whatever um and the keeper of the spawn god uses the god for whatever purposes he sees fit so you want to get rid of a race of people poof they're gone that is way too much power that's some darkness right there that is (laughs) no see that would be what taryn and company be working against well yeah but how hard would that be to defeat if you have you have a god doesn't know he's a god and is basically looking at it its parent going Hey, you, you Frank. Want me to do this? Okay, there's sure. A, there you go. There's like a, a dog. perfect, perfect I'm idea for the high-level version of that campaign. I'm a good boy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm digging that. <laughs> uh, I like that idea. Bring, bring cool. back campaign one to friggin' fight that thing. <laughs> no, oh. I like uh, this. The only I problem like is this. only you would be fighting against it. The other three would be like. Could get Kyle, Kyle might fight. Against they were assholes. Might. They were assholes the whole time. Kyle you know Ernie. You know co- Ernie would would. Take oh, it. I know Ernie. I've seen what he's friggin' done in cred. I mean. Yeah. So yeah. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, nine hey, secret societies are cults. So you know. Hey, that show, by the way, is the uh-huh. Legends of Tomorrow. That's the show. I've never heard of never it. Never heard of it. <laughs> like, it's actually, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I, it's on the CW? Yeah. It's okay. what I said. It's one of the uh, the DC Universe shows. And they're way DC's better. Than, they're, well, no, they're not the same as the movies. They're actually a lot better than the movies. Cool. Uh, there you go, folks. Nine different secret societies or cults that uh, feel free to steal, use, abuse, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you've got a cool idea, go ahead and hit us up at uh, M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail. Uh, don't forget, uh, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our <coughs> YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap like shirts, duvet covers, shower curtains, sweatshirts, shirts, sweatshirts. link is down there. Under well, uh, the underwear not safe for work site no. is something else. Uh, if you're in the market for some new shiny math rocks, go ahead and hit up at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, if you want your game to smell a whole lot better, uh, OddFishGames.com does over sixty adventure scents for your nostril uh, energy. Sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, or uh, putrid sewers if you want to dump them into the vents on your boss's car. Ooh. That works Ooh, great. That would be uh, so bad. <laughs> they also make uh, something called the Shine System. So if you want to learn how to write better uh, or want some ideas, check out the Shine System. Thursday, maybe, maybe not Cacophony. Maybe, maybe not they get to the desert. Uh, they sure as shit are behind Mortimer J. Sneed on the timeline. Uh, and then Saturday, Midwest Game Fest. It's out of Kansas City. It is on tabletop.events. Go over there, sign up. A ton of games. Uh, our event is number 98. Uh, it's called Pido. You are in a city. You're getting released from your adventure training, and you need to find a lost dog in the city. So, and that dog's name is Pido. Uh, so, there you go. Also, Sunday, Margu. So check it out. Thank you for joining us. We hope you had a good time. If you have any questions or comments, let us know. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., we hope to see you on Thursday. Let's give them the big kiss and wave and get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. Happy International Women's Day. Yeah. Muted. And done.